Do you think that as that price cycle continues, the holding cycle continues since people part with their coins, do you think this kind of we're in the fourth or we're in the fourth cycle now? Do you think that that cycle continues? Do you think diminishing returns breaks to the upside? Like, do you think it's just fundamental to human nature that whenever price goes up, some people will always sell? Like, do you see that happening as it's been happening perpetually in the future? Or do you see that changing in some way? So I think the general trend is going to be persistent. Basically, that the problem. So when you adopt most technologies, you never de-adopt the technology. You never get electri- ele- like uh, the smartphone or electrification or the radio and then go back to not having them unless you got poor, like unless something bad happens, you don't, you don't de-adopt. Whereas with Bitcoin, you know, adoption means price increases, but this means leverage, which means people get over the skis and blow up. And then people that bought what they do not understand, some percentage of them will de-adopt it. They'll sell at the lows. They'll be like, I made a mistake. I bought into a Ponzi, whatever the case may be, they get out. Uh, That's, you know, that's hard to avoid. Uh, That's why a monetary technology is likely to inherently take longer than a non-monetary technology to adopt. It's not a 10-year thing. It's like a 30-year thing, whatever the number is. It's a multi-decade thing instead of a multi-year thing, which judging, you know, that, and that's demonstrated by the fact that we're 15 years in and, you know, there's still a long way to go. This is, you know, this is a, a much, this is like the internet. This is like the industrial revolution. It's not like one thing, like a smartphone. It, it's a whole suite of just overhauling an entire system and, and putting in a whole nother system. Um, now, that doesn't mean that every cycle necessarily has to have diminishing returns compared to the prior one. You know, maybe the last cycle was unusually weak for a number of reasons. Uh, and maybe the next cycle is bigger, for example. Um, you know, the, the law of large numbers means you're probably not going to have those initial cycles ever again, where you have, you know, you go up like a thousand fold or 50 fold. Um, in a couple of years, right? I mean, th- those types of crazy cycles are probably behind us, at least in real terms. You know, unless we have hyperinflation of the, you know, the, you know, the dollar itself, like the unit of account we're counting in. But in terms of real terms, you know, it's easy to go from a thousand people like Bitcoin to a million people like Bitcoin versus a million people like Bitcoin to a billion people like Bitcoin to five billion people like Bitcoin, right? I mean, eventually you d- you do get real diminishing returns structurally. But it doesn't mean that every cycle has to be smaller than the one before. You could have a you could surprise you the upside in one cycle, and then you know. But I, I think that's that there's some cyclical aspect of, uh, inherently there, because whenever it goes up too smoothly, it's going to build up leverage and people are going to get wrecked, and it's going to have to have a consolidation. So it sounds like you're this cycle of credit reapplication, growing, collapsing, growing, collapsing is going to continue. So. So clearly self-custody is important. Uh, where I work at the Bitcoin Advisor, we do a lot of multi-sig solutions. We've been seeing exploding demand, both from individuals, families, high net worth individuals for their estate planning, but then also companies and churches are starting to have interest as well. So when it comes to looking at the future of Bitcoin adoption and Bitcoin custody solutions, what do you think the future of those custody solutions are at, at helping people protect against that rehypothecation craziness? And what do you what role do you think multisig has in that? Uh, so I I'm, I'm pretty optimistic on multisig. Um, I, I think collaborative custody is important. Um, you know I think it's natural for people to there's a, a good service to basically be a key provider for someone to say okay you can hold two out of three keys in different locations and we can hold the third key and provide technical support um, you know to help you. I think that's a that's a useful service uh, because if I'm trying to you know figure out where to put three keys. Uh, you know, I think, okay, one in my home and one in my safe deposit box. And what am I going to do with the third one? Am I going to have another safe deposit box? Am I going to, it's nice to have a Bitcoin dedicated company to be like, I'm going to hold that for you in some way, either in an app or in, in themselves or, you know, that it's a useful service. Um, so I do think that's important. I also just, just think in general, better UX among devices is useful. So for example, you know, not everybody needs like, you know, Michael Saylor level security, if they're just trying to store ten thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin, right? They a tap signer or a couple tap signers might suffice, right? Um, and so we need kind of that spectrum of like vault level security, like if the Ocean's Eleven team is coming after you, like can you defend against that? Versus like just basic stuff, like you know if your house gets burned down, do you lose your Bitcoin or not? Um, you know, like just basic stuff, like how hard, like it, it, to make it kind of idiot proof, like don't, 
make it really hard to accidentally lose your Bitcoin or get them stolen in some way. Uh, and there's a spectrum there, and they're all important. And it, realistically, probably, you know, only a percentage of people are going to want to self-custody most or all of their coins. And so then the, the second thing is, how do you make custodians that don't suck, right? So how, how do you make custodians that don't, like, I mean, it, it's, part, it's part of the Wild West of developing in a, in a semi-unregulated environment, you know, like people with crazy hair in, in the Bahamas and like, they're gonna, you know, so it, there's, you know, I would trust, for example, Cash App, a publicly traded company, before I would trust some offshore exchange, right? If I wanted to hold some percentage of my Bitcoin there. Um, same thing for any other, you know, like Fidelity, for example, right? If, if, you know, I still have to worry about government, you know, confiscations or, you know, things like that. But it's like, I, I, I can be pretty sure that they're not like gambling with my tokens on the side. They're not, they're not like, you know, they're not doing sketchy things there. And so it's that spectrum between actually serious audited custodians versus making it easy to, for people to self-custody in a security framework that makes sense for the amount that they're trying to secure. Uh, I, I agree with that. And I do think more people are going to adopt that, uh, especially as Bitcoin's value goes up. I think that more people are going to want that diversification and security. What makes Lynn so special to me is her ability to think critically from a first principle standpoint with an engineering background, as well as being able to communicate those thoughts clearly and concisely. I happen to agree with her. Number one, I happen to agree that market cap is set at the margins downwind of price, and therefore Bitcoin's price in terms of U.S. dollars could appreciate incredibly rapidly, perhaps by orders of magnitude in each coming cycle. Secondly, I happen to agree that a lot of rehypothecation and fake paper Bitcoin and yield products are ahead of us. I think volatility will continue. And therefore, number three, I happen to agree with her that I think self-custody is really important for you to consider and really important for you to consider urgently. And number four, Lynn and I both talk about how collaborative custody, multi-sig solutions could be a viable option for many people in the coming future. And so if you have an interest in taking self-custody, if you have an interest in setting up a multi-sig solution and collaborative custody partnership, I do work at the Bitcoin Advisor precisely for this purpose because I think it is the future. You can find me in the link in the description below at the Bitcoin Advisor, where our primary goal is to help you securely transition your Bitcoin off exchanges into your own hands and into your own self-sovereignty. It's really important that you begin considering what happens to you in the event that you lose your seed phrases, what happens to you in the event that you pass on, will your children, your loved ones, your company, your spouse, whomever your descendants are, what happens to them if your keys have issues or have troubles and have maintenance? So if you want someone to help you through that process, one-on-one, -on -one, to create a multi-sig vault, to help you create an estate plan, to be an ongoing collaborative custody partner, and help reassure you in the face of all these products and all these innovations happening to Bitcoin atop the base layer, if you want to have someone assist you in the coming years and hopefully coming decades, Bitcoin Advisor could be a good place for you to consider. If you go to the link in the description, you can find learn more about me and why I'm personally there as well. And I will send you dozens of pages of free documents, both about our company specifically at the Bitcoin Advisor and multi-sig and cloud custody in general. Purely educational content for you to learn about. Dozens of pages with great content, great perspectives, ideas, and thought-provoking uh, perspectives for you to consider in the coming months and years as you take more and more of your Bitcoin into self-custody. So not only, again, do you get information about collaborative and multi-sig custody in general, and you also get information about the Bitcoin advisor specifically. Also, I'm happy to send you, or you'll find a link below, a comparison of what Bitcoin Advisor does compared to our competition, what we provide, and our goal is to provide 10 times the value for half the cost. So if you have an interest in multi-sig, I strongly encourage you to consider it now. More and more companies are only going to have the option of multi-sig. See, a company or a charity or a church cannot pursue the option of a single SIG solution. They have to, they have to pursue multi-sig solutions. So... As an individual, as a company, or as a board of a charity or church, whatever the case, if you're interested in a multi-sig solution for the long term for cold storage, I highly encourage you to start doing so now. Whether that's with me at the Bitcoin Advisor or elsewhere, I strongly encourage you to do it. Because that rehypothecation will continue, Bitcoin's rapid price appreciation will continue, and in those events, demand will skyrocket for these precise kinds of services and for time with people that are experts in this field. So... Again, once more, please check out the link in the description for the Bitcoin Advisor where you can find me. You can schedule a meeting with me. You can book a free consultation with me there. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Again, happy to send you dozens of pages of free complimentary information for you to learn more about your Bitcoin and learn more about your Bitcoin self-custody solutions. Because again, whether you work with me or not, it's far more important. Please just consider taking self-custody as soon as possible. Link in the description. Thanks.